I'm Billy Harris, you're hanging with Harris. We're in the legendary James Beard House in New York City. A good friend, Shem Blum. How are you, Shem? I'm good, I'm hanging with Harris. You are hanging with Harris. You are the brand ambassador for Reka Vodka. That's correct? right, yes. And it's an exciting night, so we have a New Orleans themed dinner downstairs, so they told me you're gonna do some kind of New Orleans kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. So I you know I wanted to do kind of a classic cocktail. I did a variation on a cocktail called the Corpse Survivor number no. two. This is from the Savoy cocktail book of 1930, okay. and uh, it was one of those cocktails that they were traditionally the hair of the dog cocktails. Those sure. Are those cocktails that you want to have that drink hangover. In the this is the next yes, day. Yeah. Traditionally, it's made with gin, lele, cointreau, and absinthe. For okay. this cocktail, I wanted to use Reka vodka here. It's a nice Icelandic vodka, very pure. Comes from pure water source in, in Iceland, and sure. and as opposed to the gin, it's a little bit more of a clear cut, pure flavor. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, the other variation I made was with this herb saint. So traditionally yeah. this cocktail is made with absinthe. Right. I wanted to go with the New Orleans uh, specialty here, which is basically a New Orleans version of absinthe. The glass is being chilled right here. Yeah, we so got the good. glass being chilled right here to make sure that you know we keep the temperature consistent when we actually pour the cocktail in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of uh, fresh lemon. So okay. I like to squeeze the lemon as we make it, if we have the opportunity. So here we okay. go. Perfect. So here we go, that's your three quarters of an ounce. Okay. Then we're gonna use, uh, Three quarters of an ounce of the triple sec. This adds uh, the sweetness to the cocktail. Yeah, that Cointreau yeah. right there, you can smell it. It's got that exactly. orangey liqueur. And here we have this uh, French aperitif wine, which gives it a little bit of that kind of wine flavor, which is nice. It's sure. a little drier. Sure. It balances out the sweetness. Perfect. A little lile. I already feel like I'm in New Orleans. Mm. We need a little vodka action here. Finally, here we have Finally. the Reka. Yes. I've been waiting for the Reka. The, the star of the show. You know, this vodka is really a pure uh, product. It's got a little citrus and minerality to it, which is nice, adds a nice dimension sure. to this cocktail. So what we're gonna do is uh, get started with the shake. Okay. The world's greatest ice uh, tongues here yeah, at exactly. the Beard House. And we give it a nice... That's the thing. Strong shake. Oh look, what was that? That was like well, the Shem Blum A little Blum bit of flair, a little technique. bit of flair. That was exciting, that's a first. Um, and then uh, we have this chill. chilled glass here, so we're gonna dump this ice yep. back into the ice bucket, and here's where we do the, uh, here's where the herb saint comes in. Right, and I mean, this is a strong, I mean, Very if strong flavor, absinthe, yes, or... if you've had absinthe before, <laughs> similar, this is 100 proof, uh, you know, so it's got a lot of yes. boldness, a lot of kick to it. So we just do a little drip of that. Yep. Does that just rinse and yeah, dump? Yeah, I'm just going to rinse it around the glass. Make sure you coat this glass. Yeah. And that's it, just to yep. dress the rim, so to say. And we're going to strain. We're going to do a double strain on this, yes. too? Make sure we get all the ice chips. Right, and this is one of those really clean cocktails, Very right? No clean. Garnish. The, garnish is is the garnish is essentially is the herb saint here. The herb yeah. saint. Corpse Reviver number two. All right, so once again, even portions the uh, Reka vodka, the Lille, Lille. Cointreau, uh, yeah, plus yeah. fresh lemon juice, fresh lemon and then juice. we just basically dress just the glass. Little, That's little, the garnish. Yes. Now this is the part of the day. It's my favorite portion of the reward. Shem, that's a great cocktail. Thanks for hanging with Harris. Thanks for having me. The kitchen is smelling amazing right now for tonight's New Orleans themed dinner, so I'm gonna go down there and check it out. We'll see you real soon. We're in the legendary James Beard house, my good friend Daniel Callsgrove. How are you, Daniel? I'm hanging with Harris. You are hanging with Harris. From the Grill Room, the Windsor Court Hotel in New Orleans. Yeah, that's correct. It's a legendary hotel and dining room. It is a legendary room. hotel. Uh, beautiful frescoes on the wall. Sure. Um, and the most elegant setting that you could possibly get. You're not a New Orleans guy, right? Uh, I am. I would describe myself as a New Orleans guy now, Wait but a minute, it definitely now. always takes a lot to be from New Orleans. I mean, exactly. one thing that's very important is in New Orleans is the local culture. But I've been there for seven years. So it's kind of like time. you're from there. Yeah. But you're upstate New York guy originally? Is that yeah, I'm originally from Syracuse, New York. Um, right, cooked in cool, New York cool. City for a little while and then came down to New Orleans and made that Culinary home. school guy or school of hard knocks? I school of like, hard knocks. Really? Yeah, definitely. You started um, cooking up there, made your way to New York? Yeah, I would think that, you know, I. My culinary school was in the kitchens of uh, Cafe des Artistes in New York yeah, and Le Cirque. Fun. Do you feel like being in New Orleans now for seven years has your style of cooking changed? I know we're going to demo a dish in a moment, but do you feel like, you know, because New Orleans is Creole, it's French, it's Caribbean, it's Southern, yeah, it's, it's, it's Spanish, all of African, Spanish, all that African. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely influenced my cooking um, and just the breadth of local ingredients that we have. Everybody 
eats the same things across uh, racial and ethnic boundaries, yes. across economic, different classes. Um, everybody's eating crab. Everybody's eating crawfish. You'll see all these heavily seasoned dishes, sure. and it's just everything thrown together to become its own unique flavor. In the and mouth of the mighty Mississippi. Exactly. That's where it all yeah, comes yeah, together, exactly. that trifecta. <laughs> All right, so is this a little signature dish of yours or that they do at the yeah, grill room? Yeah, this is something you can get at the grill room. Uh, it's a crab gratin, which is kind of like a classic New Orleans dish. You'll have older restaurants such as the Bonton Cafe, um, where classic, just a really rich, sure. uh, creamy bechamel with cheese on top and a ton of crab. My version is lightened up, a little more refined, um, okay. but paying homage to that really delicious kind of classic New Orleans flavor. Kind of you know. So Daniel, walk me through the dish. What are we gonna do? Okay, we're just gonna add some sherry cream yes. to our pan here. I already feel like I'm in New Orleans because yep. we're starting off with sherry cream. Uh huh. Okay. So first we'll add our Louisiana That was my next question, I assume crab. it's a little Louisiana crab. Of course. So can you get crab all year or is it seasonal? And, Pretty much uh, all year. I think, you know, actually right around now, it seems like Mardi Gras season, it's always tough to get. I don't know if that's because of the biology of crabs or just because Mardi Gras is starting and the yeah. fishermen like yeah. to participate too. Um, <laughs> like, but, there's no crab the next six weeks because right. we're on Bourbon Street. Exactly. Um, we're just gonna let our cream thicken up a little bit. And once we see those nice big magic bubbles right in, in the middle of the pan. And that and was manchego see, that you just sprinkled on top? Yep, a little bit of manchego just to help it thicken up. Um, and then this is a really special ingredient. Wow. This is bowfin caviar, which is, uh, the bowfin is a relative of the sturgeon, a little okay. bit actually older, okay. and it just, as it cooks, it gets a little bit red. Sure. And just some richness of flavor. All going into the plate, right? Yeah, and now we're just going to plate our crab mixture. Sure. Uh, nice and tight yep. in the bowl. Looks delicious, smells amazing. And it's the gratin, right? Like it. It's the whole crab gratin. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, I think the one cool thing about this dish is a little surprising. What we're going to do is we're going to garnish it with these little asparagus, asparagus right? tips. Got it. Uh, a couple of these radishes that have been just braised in some white wine vinegar. Okay. Um, they have a really nice explosion of flavor. Um, and then some black garlic, which is a common ingredient in Chinese cooking. Yeah. It's garlic that's actually been um, fermented <laughs> in a really like sort of controlled way. Sure. It's got a nice funky sweet flavor. Okay. Um, so then once we have it garnished, we're going to cover it with these slices of manchego. Right. Um, and then we'll just grab the blowtorch over there yes, and we'll have right. a little fun. You wanna just torch the cheese from end to end, don't torch be afraid. The cheese. Get some nice color on oh, there. Oh, this really kind of. That's <laughs> where we get the gratin. Um, Ooh, we're getting, getting there the you gratin. See oh, nice I see when you brown. get close. It does oh, that's this. beautiful. Ooh, Meld around the Oh, crab. you can, yep. this is. <laughs> it become transparent and then right there, I think. So yeah. um, it gets a little final garnish, a little, I guess a yeah, microgreen of gonna, some sort. Yeah, we're just gonna garnish it with some red lucky sorrel, which is actually something that grows wild in New Orleans and all around, I just discovered. And these are some watercress flowers. And there you have See, it. See, so it's good. You kind of took this classic dish. We had the sherry cream, we had the crab, we had the caviar, you know, and it just has a little bit of a twist, right? And this yeah. is a signature dish at the grill room, right? At yep. the Windsor Court in New Orleans. Should I just give it a go? Should I get in get there? Get in there. And then you get this fabulous melty, gooey, ooey cheese mm -hmm. on top. See, I'm, I'm gonna get myself a healthy bite here. I'm getting all it. That's exactly what I expected it to taste like. You know, it uh -huh. really tastes like this crab gratin, right? As you say, yeah. the melty cheese, the manchego, you get it all, a little bit of the caviar. It's Richness. a delicious dish. All right, so the Grill Room, New Orleans, Windsor Court Hotel, Daniel Callsgrove. Thanks for hanging with Harris. Thank you. Pleasure. James Beard House in New York City, and we'll see you real soon. Thank you.